helpful to put the current dispute and debate over abortion in context. Remember that we've had back-to-back -back presidents with starkly different positions on abortion. One of them took action against partial birth abortion and to cut federal funding for abortion, while the other identified as strongly pro-choice to the point of supporting the right to partial birth abortion. And of course, you know which one took action against partial birth abortion. I voted against partial birth abortion. And which one did not want to ban partial birth abortion. She would not ban it? No. Or ban partial birth abortion? No, I would, I would, I am, I am pro-choice in every respect. And of course, we know which one would not support government funding for abortion. I do not vote for funding for abortion. And which one said he was strongly pro-choice? I'm very pro-choice. Of course, if you want to rally social conservatives to send you to the White House, that may not be the best campaign slogan. Well, I just believe in choice. So yeah, just a few years ago, both Biden and Trump were the odd men out in their respective political parties. I'm a bit of an odd man out in my party. But then both of them changed their positions coincidentally about the same time that doing so advanced their own national political ambitions. But you just saw how neither Trump nor Biden have been as locked in on abortion as they'd like you to think now, and they're not alone. Public opinion on this issue is more nuanced than politicians on both sides would have you believe. And to drive that point home, here's what politicians on both ends are now saying about this new Texas law, followed by what the general public thinks. Unborn children are extremely vulnerable and we need to make sure that they're being protected. It's vile, it's offensive. There are no exceptions to rape or incest. The Texas law effectively bans abortion when a heartbeat can be detected in a fetus. Where would you guess people line up on that in concept? Well, before the law took effect, Kaiser Family Foundation polling asked, do you support or oppose laws prohibiting abortion once cardiac activity, sometimes known as fetal heartbeat, is detected? Compare your guess to these results. It's a near even split, 49% support, 50% oppose. But when they followed up by saying, what if we told you fetal heartbeat is usually detected six weeks into pregnancy before many women know they are pregnant, then the results shifted 10 points. With that, a clear majority, 60% oppose it. We've seen a lot of this in polling the past few years on abortion. Positions swing one direction or the other based on how they phrase the questions or what additional context the pollsters provide. That appears to be in part due to the fact that a lot of people's opinions are not locked in on this. And being a sensitive issue, a lot of people don't openly discuss. Many also have a significant lack of knowledge on the issue. While more than 60% say they or someone they know has had an abortion, a majority of adults are unaware of the timing of most abortions. 42% don't realize Roe v. Wade allows restrictions on abortions. And they're all over the map on what they think overturning Roe v. Wade would mean in their states. And the labels people choose to identify themselves on this issue can also be misleading. While 40% identify as pro-life, 3 in 10 who call themselves pro-life do not want the Supreme Court to overturn Roe v. Wade. Overall, polls after polls show a clear majority think abortion should be legal in the United States. But polls after polls also show a clear majority think states like Texas have the right to add restrictions. And as we showed you, opinions on what Texas is doing are not yet fully informed or fully locked in. So then what's driving the timing of all this? Why are politicians in Texas and now Florida and other states focusing on abortion when it's not a top issue for voters on either side of the political spectrum? And that comes down to a matter of politics and math. Because it signals that we have a pro-life majority on the high court. The death of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg put the new Texas abortion law in motion with Ginsburg, who long defended abortion rights, gone, and succeeded by Justice Amy Coney Barrett, who has personal opinions against abortion, anti-abortion activists and politicians have a decent chance of overturning Roe v. Wade and making abortion illegal across the United States. When they say a decent chance, that of course requires making assumptions that these three would support abortion rights, that these three would not, and that these three all appointed by Trump or Bush could tip the balance. And of course, any such assumptions with any of them could be wrong and especially wrong when it comes to these three. But anti-abortion groups still think this is their best chance in decades, so they're pushing new laws that test the limits of Roe v. Wade to drive a dispute to the Supreme Court now stacked 6-3 to three to the right with a strategy to see if they'll overturn Roe v. Wade and outlaw abortion as the nation did before 1973. That's where this new law in Texas banning nearly all abortions in that state come into play for us. Florida state lawmakers, including leadership, are already planning to pass a law modeled on Texas next year. Well, I've taken the Texas.
just bill uh verbatim the exact bill and put it into bill drafting and when it's finalized and done being drafted i'm going to file it as a standalone bill but again as all of this plays out in texas now and soon in florida remember that public opinion is different than what you typically hear from politicians and activists on the left and on the right for decades gallup and other polls have found at or less than 30 percent say abortion should always be legal and at or less than 20% say it should always be illegal. 50% or more are somewhere in between, meaning they want it both legal on a federal level and support restrictions from the states. And when they say they favor restrictions, most are not thinking in terms of restrictions to protect health and safety. 67% are thinking of restrictions intended to make abortion harder to get. And they still favor the restrictions understanding that intent. So a plurality, and in many cases a majority, do not fall neatly on one side or the other. For many, abortion is just not a black and white issue. There are a lot of shades of gray, or as this graphic shows, a lot of shades of green.